we don't get colonization from current generation probiotics. So we're talking about lactobacillus strains, bifidobacteria strains, um, even the E. coli strains we currently have, Saccharomyces probiotics, and I would say the bacillus type strains too, they don't permanently colonize. They're all temporary visitors. And this has been clear for also like 40, 50 years. I think this is for me, the interesting thing is that, that we, there's this conception that, that, you know, one of the five R points is, you know, re-inoculate and people think that they can just take antibiotics or, and then just pop a pill and, and everything will be replenished from that and forever onwards. And, and it's good to know that that's not true. <laughs> it's rubbish. It does not happen because I think it makes you appreciate and care for that ecosystem differently when you know that it's actually, one, it is unique. It's yours. It's been passed down your family line and we should respect it as such. Um, and two, that it's not as simple as that. And it's not reality. If we wipe out our bifidobacteria, we can't replace it with one in a supplement. You know, it doesn't stay, you know, and again, you go back 40, 50 years, it's like a good strain, a good probiotic strain will last a week or 10 days in there versus ones that just pass straight through or ones that die in the stomach or small intestine. And, and, and we've had studies showing this time and time again, is we just don't get long term colonization as a general rule. There is the odd exception, you know, like there's the odd study. Uh, I think there's one using a strain of Bifidobacterium, I think it was AH1206, which isn't commercially available now, but that was able to colonize, I think, in 30% of people for six months afterwards. But that is immense rarity because you can just, if you delve into literature, you'll find that they last for five days, two days, 10 days, 14 days, but you can see their populations just diminish. Um, if you day, take daily, daily stool samples, it goes down all that time. And you can investigate this yourself too. I mean, you can do a stool test whilst you're taking that probiotic. And then two weeks later, do that same stool test and keep every other variable the same. And you'll see that maybe the bifidobacter was here and then it's not, not there anymore. Um, it, it's, it's pretty clear. And as someone that's done a lot of stool testing over the you know, couple of decades of my practice, using you know, accurate um, assessment techniques is you, you clearly see that, that they do not colonize. In, in these patients. Um, and I think it really cheapens the, the thought of the ecosystem and care of the ecosystem if we think it's, it's easily replaced just by popping a probiotic pill, because it's, it's not. I, I believe it's Bacillus subtilis, spore-based probiotic that is in uh, products from microbiome labs. And, and they talk about it like it does colonize and that it sort of takes up residence there and, and also that it has an impact on modifying other species of bacteria that are present in the intestines. What, what do you think of those claims about that? I think species? the latter one, I wouldn't, I mean, we know that probiotics do have some impact on the, the gut ecosystem. Now I would put that in general um, as, as relatively minor. You compare that to changes in diet. You compare that to prebiotic usage. The alterations we get from a probiotic are relatively small. You know, mm -hmm. they're not none often, and, and that can be bigger. Like if it's right after chemotherapy or right after antibiotics, you're going to get bigger changes from a probiotic usage in that case, because the ecosystem is immensely disrupted and, you know, it, it's, it's more flexible in terms of how things shift at that point. But if you take someone who's a more stable ecosystem, you give them a probiotic, whether it's spore-based or otherwise, the impact will be relatively small. Not nothing, but relatively small. But if you change their diet markedly, you give them a couple of prebiotics, you'll see dramatic changes in that ecosystem. But in terms of the long-term colonization, I haven't seen research to suggest that that's the case. Now, you know, it's possible that I've, I've missed that study. So I will, you know, showing that there's long-term colonization. Um, but again, doing lots of stool testing over the years, I, I can't even recall seeing bacillus showing up on stool tests very commonly at all, whether people are taking that, when, when people are taking that supplement, which makes me, whereas I do see bifidobacteria, I do see lactobacilli, that, Populations do go up and down if people are taking the supplement versus not. Um, that makes you think those show up on stool tests, whereas I haven't really seen that with bacillus, which makes me less, at least at, at, at detectable levels, it seems less likely to me okay. that would be occurring. 